Hi everybody, it's Saturday, it's Julianne. Uh, you are here with another edition of Baking with Friends and today I've got the fantastic Carla with me uh, who is going to help me make Atlantic Beach Pie. And for those of you who are wondering, you know, what is an Atlantic Beach Pie? It's basically a kind of a lemony lime custard uh, pie with a saltine cracker uh, base. So that today um, and we're gonna see how it goes. But first, preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Uh, we are gonna use a pie plate. Carla, hi! I feel like <laughs> you are sideways. I'm, to, I'm backwards, I guess, right? Yeah. It looks like you're kind of climbing a wall. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Let me see if I can figure this out. Hold on. Okay, while you fix that, um, I'll let everyone know the things that you need. You need a uh, eggs today, saltine crackers, unsalted butter, a little bit of granulated sugar, a can of condensed milk, um, salt, powdered sugar, heavy cream vanilla, and some lemon or lime juice and a little bit of zest. And the best thing to do is while you're juicing your lemons or your limes, just go ahead and zest that same lemon or lime. And you can start with one lemon and then if you want, you can add more. Ah, oh, perfect. Feeling good. <laughs> And you're wearing an apron, which is like the true professional. And Julia, well, once again, I knows. was, but I usually don't. I found it. <laughs> I am going to try to tone everything way, way up because I tend to forget the volume. Okay. okay. So, did you preheat your oven, Carla? 350? Oh, it's already on. Sweet. I did all my prep. It's ready. Everything's ah. <laughs> <laughs> You are ahead of the game. I know. I This week, I was like, I've got to get everything sorted or my brain is not going to work. Uh, let's get the crust ready. Let's start with the crust. So we preheated the oven to 350. Uh, you should be having a pie plate handy. It can be a nine inch about. Um, I've got just this glass one. It's about a nine and a half, which will work for what I need. Uh, that works too if you have a cake pan or if you have anything that's just round. If you don't even want a round one, you could probably get away with a square one, to be fair. I mean, it's just whatever shape you've got, work with what you've got. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to use a pie plate, but since this is called pie, round would probably make sense. Round pie. Don't have it. Don't worry about it. So we're going to take um, one and a half cups of powdered sugar. I'm like dropping things over here. One and a half cups of saltine crackers, not powdered sugar, saltine crackers uh, that you've crushed up. And it's about one and a half sleeves, about um, as much as makes one and a half cups. They don't, they don't have to be fine crumbs. They can be a little bit uh, large and that's totally okay. But I did the, I did the one and a half sleeves, so. Okay, so um, you are gonna err on more butter if you need it, but we're gonna start with six tablespoons. But if you've got your crackers, um, I found these in the store, and not to make a product plug, but I was eating them while I was crushing them, and they're really good. So, late July, guys, saltine crackers. Um, one and one half. One yeah, and one half. half. <laughs> so, I'm just going to add that to a bowl. I've crushed mine already, and I'm just going to go ahead and today, can you see my bowl today? Maybe, perhaps. I'm just going to go ahead and add my crushed saltine. Like I said, that's about one and a half cups. I have a little bit more, but should I just go for it? Yeah, and then we'll just add more butter, Carla. What you'll do is just add more butter. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to back this up a little bit. Maybe that'll help. Okay, there we go. Now you guys aren't so, like, super close to my face. All right, so one and a half cup, finally, crushed is not necessary. We can have pieces. That's fine. We are going to add six to eight tablespoons of melted butter. Start with six. If you need more and it feels dry, then add an extra two, and we'll go from there. I'm going to add that directly into my bowl. This is six tablespoons unsalted butter. It's melted. I did eight, but the, I'll measure them. <laughs> I think eight's fine, Carla, because you have more. You said you had more than one and a half cups. Yeah. So eight is going to work. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and add two tablespoons of granulated sugar. It could be also cane sugar into the bowl. So... I already mentioned it. Dump that right in. You're adding a little bit of sweet to the salty, which is always what we like, right? And I've got Mary on, just in case you guys have any questions that come up as we go through. Um, and again, the pie crust is kind of like your standard if you were making like a graham cracker pie crust, but we're using saltine crackers. And the reason why is because we want to get that extra salty taste because we're trying to mimic, the reason why it's called Atlantic Beach Pie is because 
um, the person that invented it in North Carolina sort of wanted to mimic the feel of being by the seaside and by the beach. And that's like kind of the idea. So you want to have that salt. So do so you mix, mix everything before putting it in your pan? Yes. Your mix everything before you put it in the pan. I'll put it back in the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could mix it in the pan, Carla, and then it's I was, I was, but then I was like, wait, I didn't do that right. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and make uh, my pie pan. <laughs> I'm going to take my pie pan. Now I'm going to put it in. You know, if you wanted to do less dishes, there you go. That looks good. If it looks a little, it shouldn't look completely wet. There should still be like, it should be um, kind of still crispy and it should be coated but it doesn't have to be completely wet so if you feel like you know I'm getting a little bit of crumbs that are sticking together and that's a good texture to have oh. but if you want more butter like I said you can go ahead and add it in uh, I, and then mix it. Butter, but. I think mine is good although I will say though if you add more butter it's not like it's gonna hurt it'll only make it better <laughs> so so you put eight tablespoons though <laughs> I started with six. I feel like the texture is pretty good. What you should do is, you know it's good, is if you take a bit and you press it down into your pie pan and it starts to stick together. Look at my fingers. They're all like sticking together with the crumbs. That's good. If you're finding that it's not, then you need to add more butter, which like I said, is not that bad. Um, and that's okay. And actually mine, mine is pretty good, I think. I might start pressing it to the plate just to see. And then what I'm going to do is if I feel like it's not sticking her, I'm going to go and stick some on my, my pie plate right now. Still a little loose. I might add another two tablespoons of butter. We're going all eight. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to try to be a little bit better, a little heart healthy, I suppose. But like I said, a little bit more butter. I'm going to just melt that in the microwave real quick another 30 seconds. Um, and like I said, everyone, we're going to put everything on a pie plate and it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be so crazy. I'm adding that back in. All right. I'm going to melt some more butter. Right. Because I don't have a microwave. Uh, I'm putting it in the microwave and my microwave is being fritzy. So I'm kind of scared. I'm going to watch it for about, oh yeah, that's, that doesn't feel right to me. It started fizzing out, but yet it's melting. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Uh, I think it's going to taste like butter. It should be fine. I feel like I'm about to put it on the stovetop, guys. Plan B. When your microwave feels like it's not working correctly. It started making like a little buzzy noise that I don't like. So I'm going to put, Ooh. I'm going to okay. put on the stove top. I'm going to melt that really quick. Like I said, it's about a medium, about a medium heat. My phone keeps on, I don't know why, but it keeps on shutting. It keeps on pausing. Your phone? Yeah, there we go. You still see me? Okay. Maybe someone's texting you. I know. Probably. <laughs> Maybe. I'm not that popular. I don't know. <laughs> I know. I'm such a cheater, Mary. So I'm mixing it and I added a little bit more butter and I'm looking on the stove top. I'm adding another two tablespoons. So I'm going to have eight. The fastest way, of course, is melting butter in your microwave. But for some reason, my microwave is being fritzy. So I refuse. I and Carla's gonna... melting hers on the stove top. Mine's not, it's not entirely sticking. It shouldn't, Carla. It should definitely not be completely sticky. It should be a little okay. bit, there should be a little bit of a, a bit because you've got big pieces of saltine crackers. It's not a yeah. fine crumb. If it was a fine crumb, like if you had really crushed it, then it would really stick together. But because we've got pieces that aren't, you should have a little bit of a loose. So I was showing you um, here, you should have a little bit of a loose. When it okay. bakes in the oven, it will start congealing together and when you put the custard in later on it will completely saturate it so it will even stick together even more so i think i'm good then the extra two tablespoons were good i melted my butter <laughs> on the stove top and i'm dumping it into my pan i don't know why i made that face but i'm dumping it into my pan delicious <laughs> all right what we're
we're gonna do now is once you've mixed everything together, just dump everything you've got into the pie plate. And what we're gonna do, or the round pan or whatever you're using, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start pressing it down. It doesn't have to be pressed down super, super firm, but try to do your best. And you wanna go down the bottom and a little bit up the sides. Ooh, that extra butter made it a little liquidy. <laughs> Which, again, not a bad thing. So I'm gonna give you a view of my pie pan. So like I said, my pie pan. Like I said, it's not, there's pieces, right? There's little, little chunks. So it's okay, like it doesn't have to be super fine. We don't need that, we don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that's pressing. Nice. Actually, I'm gonna break that, so that's a little big. What do you think of mine? Oh, that looks good. Yeah? Yeah, I like that it goes up the sides like that. That's nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just get a big chunk of melted butter right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go up the sides a little bit. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna douse this in custard. All right. Yeah, you're there, right? Yeah, I'm there. My phone, for some reason, keeps on pausing. Okay. So it's bit. going a little in and out today. I don't know why. Uh, but I'm getting one with my. If you want to be really exact and things like that, you can take a cup and crush the rest of the. You can press it down with the with um, your hands, or you can use a glass. Totally up to you. Just enough for it to coat the bottom and go up the sides. I think mine's pretty good. How's yours, Carla? Yours looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm doing it with my hand. Yeah, I think I we go. Sure. Two times before. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like mine's gonna be really thick on the sides. <laughs> it's, like, I, it's a nice thick, yeah, but I think it's fine because it'll be salty and tangy. So. Yes, I agree. Seven. As long as my, because now I'm like pressing it and I'm gonna, yeah, for how long? We're gonna do it for about 12 minutes. We're gonna check it and it's gonna go anywhere from 12 to 15. All right, I think I'm that's gonna good because yeah. I'm using your phone. I'm, yeah, okay. My timer? <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll go with my timer. timer so just all right. I'm going to go ahead and take this, and I'm going to put it in the oven. I'm still being, like, all very OCD about it. I'm going to stop myself. Okay. So it says 350 degrees. It's going for 350, and we're going to go for uh, 12 to 15 minutes. So set your timer if you haven't done it already. I'm going to stop trying to play with my and I'm going to dump it into my oven. Okay. Moving on to the custard while we wait. Uh, let me set the timer. Setting the timer 12 minutes. All right, everyone. I hope you have placed your saltine cracker crust in the oven. <laughs> yes. That's what we did. Because, yeah, that's what we did. And in 12 minutes, we'll check to make sure it hopefully came out okay. Um, so next, we're going to go ahead and make the custard that's going to go into the crust. And this is good because um, kind of like lemon bars and such like that, you want the bubbles to dissipate from the custard before we put it in. So we are going to take um, one can of sweetened condensed milk. So I am using this random La Lechera, the Nestle one. And I am opening it to a 14-ounce can. And we're going to mix that in with the following. We're going to have four eggs. Ooh, nice 365. Um, half a cup of lemon juice. And we're going to do like a pinch of salt and some zest. If I can get my can openers to work. I cannot get my can opener to work. So I like saving um, dishes because I hate doing a whole bunch of unnecessary dishes. So I'm just going to put everything in this liquid measuring cup that I've got. Uh, that I've put a half a cup of a mix of lemon and lime juice. So this is half a cup of lemon and lime juice. And I'm going to go ahead and just take the can of sweetened condensed milk. And I'm going to take the whole can and I'm going to dump it straight into the lime juice. Okay, and I'm going to mix that together. Ah, okay. So if I can bowl, get my spatula. In the, in the big bowl? Uh, you can put it in a big bowl. Yeah. Okay. I only have one big bowl, so... Yeah, because the whipped cream can be in a smaller bowl, Carla, when we make but it. But it doesn't. We, it doesn't matter if we're um, putting the we're putting the egg yolks after, right? So I'm gonna mix. Yeah, we're putting the, the eggs last. Okay. So I'm gonna put the egg so 
I opted for two thirds because I wanted to do a little bit more time. Oh yeah, that's so, that's nice. Yeah, so I it's a sure. half, two um, lemons, two limes. I think that's what I did. Yeah. So I already yeah. that. Two yeah. thirds. Okay. Yeah. So Carla just brought up a good point. Um, if you want it to be a more tart, more lemon juice or more lime juice, about two thirds cup. And I'm grabbing the last of this condensed milk. And I'm going to get my handy dandy whisk. Oh, okay. And I'm going to attempt to try to show you what's going down. So, I'm with <laughs> <laughs> so I just put it in a liquid measuring cup with my lemon juice. I'm just going to give that a quick stir. It's going to be really thick. Increase that as it goes. It's going to be a pretty thick mixture. Don't worry, we're going to add more liquid to this because we're adding some eggs. Mm, okay. To this, I'm going to go ahead and add four eggs. Now, I made a notation in the recipe, and I, I think I, I mentioned it also in, in the comment section. If you want your custard to be a little bit more dense, you can just use yolks. You don't have to use a whole egg. Um, a lot of people like using egg yolks and then making a meringue and you can make like a lemon meringue type pie. This is a different than that because we're using whipped cream topping. But if you want to, you can use just yolks or you can do half yolks and half whole eggs. It's completely up to you. In my case scenario, I'm using the whole egg. Uh, Carla, you're using just yolks? I'm just using the yolks, yes. Okay. I separate it. I, have, I also have the, I guess, um, the whole the, the egg white separated already if I wanted to use them, but I'm just gonna do it for the egg yolks. Okay, yeah. Um, if worst comes to worst and you have leftover like egg whites, just make like an omelet the next day, or just like you know something that needs eggs. So I'm gonna go ahead and crack these. We're gonna add these one at a time, and we're gonna incorporate it one at a time. I went ahead and I am going. I cracked my egg in a separate bowl, and I'm just gonna go ahead and add one egg, and then I'm gonna mix that in. Okay. And then I'm gonna take another egg. That was like a pseudo mix. You can see the yolk still in there. I'm gonna crack my second egg in my other bowl. No eggshells. Now, if you are making like a meringue or anything like that, you'd wanna have your eggs at room temperature. Um, it just whips easier when they're room temp. When you're separating them, you definitely want them to be cold, but since we're not doing either, that was a really bad egg break, guys. <laughs> but no yolks, or no shells. That's three. One of my yolks broke, so I'm just... Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> it's okay. It's still here. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so I'm gonna do fourth. Running out of room. Okay. Okay. I was trying to think a bowl would have been good. Okay, four. There we go. I'm just gonna mix it all together. And it should start being loose. So we started with a really thick mixture and now it should be a little bit looser. I'm gonna mix that all together. If it's pale yellow, it's still a little thick. That's okay. Keep whisking. It doesn't have to be super thin. Okay. And then yep. once I get everything incorporated, I'm going to add in my salt, about an eighth of a teaspoon, like a pinch, pinch of salt. I only have one side. Oh, okay. And then I went ahead and I zested my lemon that I used for the juice. And then also I had lime. So that's zest I'm going to go ahead and put in right now into the mix. And I'm going to go ahead and just okay. stir that in or fold it in. I'm gonna use my whisk still. That will give it some extra citrusy flavor. And our custard is done. Yay! We just have to wait for the pie crust to come. Then just give it a stir. Mine's like this like yellowy mixture. And we should be good. We are done with Whoa. that. So, all right. This is coming together fairly quickly, Carla. I have high hopes for us. <laughs> Much high hopes. I'm okay. 
nervous about the whipped cream, but it's okay. Don't be nervous about the whipped cream. Um, we can go ahead and let's let's talk about the whipped cream before we go ahead and um, start out with the whipped cream. I've got another five minutes on my timer for the crust before we check on it. Uh, let me tell you about the whipped cream. So normally in like a lemon meringue pie, you or a lemon pie, a traditional lemon pie uh, that this is kind of mimicked off of, you would make a meringue and we would put the meringue on top of the pie and then we would brown the meringue and that's what you would eat with. But here we have a whipped cream topping, which between you and me, Carla, I feel like is going to be extra delicious. <laughs> okay, it's going to be extra delicious. I was delicious. Nervous about the meringue, so I have like no meringue for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I know, I'm like, I'm, I'm, sometimes I like meringue, sometimes I don't, it just depends. Um, for this particular thing, we're going to whip cream. Now, people do get nervous about whipping cream because it takes a second to whip the cream. Um, and then if you whip it too much, you'll make butter. So don't do that. Um, we are going to go ahead and a lot of people like using a cold bowl that helps or very cold, heavy whipping cream and make sure it is heavy cream. Light cream is, I suppose, better for you, but it's not going to whip. So they save us from the butter. I know. You need the fat. The fat needs to be there. I mean, it's only going to make it better, right, Carla? <laughs> so um, that's what you're going to use. We're going to have a little bit of powdered sugar to add to the sweetness. And the sweetness is really up to you. Some people don't want it too sweet. Some people want it sweeter. It's You add it as you go along, and then you just give it a quick taste. I usually start with about two tablespoons. And then if I want it to be sweeter, I'll add some more in. And the adding is never a bad thing. It's You can't take it back, though, after you put it in. So remember that. Um, and then I like adding vanilla to my whipping cream. You don't have to, uh, but I think it gives it a little bit of an extra flavor kick uh, versus just straight of a milk taste, if that makes sense. So that's what we're gonna need for whipping the cream. Uh, this pie, you don't put the whipped cream on as soon as it comes out of the oven. You have to wait till it's cold. So this is what I was sad about, Carl, actually when I was reading the recipe for this that we're gonna have to wait to eat it. Another recipe where I have to wait to eat it. Like we can't just eat it right away. We could also just eat it and <laughs> whipping cream on the side. I just put it on the side. <laughs> <laughs> that's I suppose. The custard might be runny though. That's what I worry about. Um, but um, that's fair. It could be kind of like a melty pie. It could be like a melty pie, I suppose, if you do it that way. Um, at the beach. That's your back multi pie. <laughs> and that is true. If you don't want a lot of whipped cream, you could just put it on the side. You don't have to put it on top of the pie. Uh, you could also just put like fresh berries on top of the pie, a little bit more lime zest if you want, lemon zest. Uh, we're going to sprinkle some sea salt on it to give it a little bit of an extra salty taste. So all of those things. And my timer is going to go off in the next minute. And we're going to check. Are you going to look through the window? I'm going to look through the window. <laughs> I didn't turn on my oven light. I like looking. I don't know about any of you guys. I like looking through the, the glass just to see. I do too. Um, I need to wash my, I was washing my bowl because it's, um. Oh, because you're going to use it for the cream? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. Do that. Um, so guys, I was worried about this pie crust because I was like, oh no, it feels a little loose. And you know, it's, it's, we're gonna put it in, but I, we have to trust the recipe. I poked my head into my oven and the, because of the melted butter has like melted with the sugar. And now it actually looks like a crust, like an actual crust. It's pretty firm and it's pretty flat. And I'll show you in a second when I pop it out of the oven. Uh, but what we're looking for is we're looking for it to be a golden brown. Your butter and your sugar have caramelized into your saltine crackers, right? And that is what is forming the crust. And we're going to need the crust to be a good base because we're about to pour this custard in. And if it's not, it will soak through the crust. And you don't want that because you want it to be solid, right? When you cut through. Although, again, if you make a mistake here, is it bad? I feel like it's not. It will still be delicious. You just have it's like, gonna, you know, it's, it's going to be a little rustic and it's still going to be okay. So you're fine. Um, so. Guys, we have made our custard. We're waiting for the pie crust to get out of the oven. Uh, we're going to go ahead and look at the whipped cream. So again, prepare for the whipped cream. You're going to need a pan mixer or a stand mixer if you don't have one. Um, or you can use a whisk. A balloon whisk is probably handy. 
or any wits that you've got, and you're going to have to do it by hand. And if you do that by hand, know that it's going to take longer to whisk it because you don't have the mechanics of the technology, right? So if I like the using um, the technology because my arm gets lazy, I'll be honest with you, <laughs> when you whip it by hand, and I've seen people whip it by hand because they're just like, boo hoo, it's going to taste better if you whip it by hand. Let me tell you, it's the same. So <laughs> I think it's the same. So if you have the technology, yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect, yeah. If you're going to use a stand mixer, it needs to be the whisk attachment. And if not, you need the beaters. And my timer just went off, Carla. Do you want to ch check? Let's check our crest. Actually, I'm going to Okay, I grab my oven mitts. I feel like mine. Mm, Mine's looking a little. Okay. I feel I like my, our technology is being difficult. Yeah, it's having a Saturday, case of the Saturdays. Okay. This one's mine. I think mine is still needs either. A I minute or two? feel like it's too, like, it's too bad. Yeah, two, two, two or three minutes. Mine is looking pretty golden. I'll show you guys what mine is looking like. Ah. Um, I did realize that my side shrunk. Like, all oh, yeah. Time. So it's like, it's going to be more of like a, a bar than a pie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to put way too much. Yeah. So, but this is mine. I think that's pretty good, actually. I'm not going to, I'll actually maybe, maybe another minute. I'll go ahead in another minute for just one of the sides, but it looks pretty, it looks pretty golden. Yeah, yours looks golden. I think maybe yeah. I have yeah. one at the bottom shelf. I'm going to look at the bottom. That looks, that looks pretty good. Ah. So, yeah. Okay. I'm going to let mine sit then for just a second. And uh, give yourself another minute. Do you want me to put the timer on, Carla, for you? You've got it? Okay. I, I think it wasn't golden like yours, so it's fine. It's probably the extra butter. I gotta be fair. <laughs> I, did, I did put a whole stick of butter in this. Oh, you put a whole stick? Yeah, I put a whole stick of butter. Because I only put, uh, I have a little quarter one. Yeah. I put half of that, so in total it was maybe like 10 tablespoons, which is still a lot, mind you, but. Yeah. That's, I mean, but like I said, it's only gonna make it better, guys. Yep. It's only gonna make it better. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna let the crust cool down for just a second uh before we go to do everything again preparing your whipped cream is the moment right now get all your materials out for that including your stand mixer you want your cream to be very cold so we're not going to take it out until we're about to mix it and the reason why is the colder your cream the faster and the better it's going to go ahead and whip so let's go ahead and prepare for that my crust smells really good I'm gonna be so sad that we're gonna to have to wait just a little bit to, <laughs> to go ahead and taste it, but you're gonna to have to let it chill in the fridge. So um, I'm gonna go ahead. The crust a little bit? What was that? We'll have to let the crust chill a bit? Uh, yeah, but not really, Carla. So literally as soon as yours comes out, we can go ahead and put the filling back in. So now remember we're airing on more like a golden color we don't want it to get really really brown your crust is still going to cook a little bit yeah. while it's in the oven because we're going to go for at least another 14 to 16 minutes with the custard in so i'm I, I told carla my crust shrank a little i forgot to go really high up the sides and so mine is going to be more like a lemon bar pie <laughs> so, like it's going to be an atlantic pie bar <laughs> what does it go for? So um, you should have your custard mix at the ready, a handy. Um, I'm going to give mine a quick stir just to make sure that everything is incorporated correctly. As I showed, I think, everyone before. I just put it in the liquid measuring cup. I just took the pie out. Okay. You just took yours out, Carla? Yeah. All right. You're good? Because okay. I think it said uh, it'll cook more, so I don't also want it to be super like burnt. yeah super <laughs> like crisp yeah. okay so i've got my crust 
I've also got my custard. All we're doing is we're going to pour the custard into the pie pan or the round pan or whatever you're using right now. And I'm just going to pour that directly on top. And again, as I told Carla, I didn't go up the sides. <laughs> I think it'll be delicious. Anyway. I think it'll be good. It'll still be all right. My custard is just going to go ahead and get enveloped by the crust. I have you like literally had to shift for the video to stand up. So your my phone is between a masking tape roll. <laughs> is it? Make it stand. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Make well, sure. mine, I, like, I've got it on a stand, but for some reason, I wonder if it's because, I, I wonder if I need to plug in my phone. It keeps on pausing, so I apologize to everyone that's actually following along and listening to me jabber. Apologies if you hear me mid-jabber. So I went ahead and I poured my crust, or I poured my custard into my crust, and I'm going to put this back into my 350-degree oven, as we see here. I'm going to put this back in for about four, we're gonna start with 14 minutes and then go up to 16. We're waiting for it to kind of get a little jiggly. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. 14 minutes. Yeah, about. <laughs> in the top or the bottom rack? I'm putting it in the middle. Okay. In the middle rack so it doesn't get too much high heat. So about 14 to 16 minutes. And then while that is happening, grab your whipped cream stuff. Okay, let's see. Okay, okay. so I'm gonna grab I thought my bowl was over here, but no, it's in my fridge. So I went ahead and put my bowl in the, fr the fridge earlier so it's really cold. And I'm going to go ahead and get uh, one cup of heavy whipping cream. One cup. That I've already pre portioned out this direct seal. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys my bowl. So here's my bowl. This is one cup of heavy whipping cream. I'm going to add that directly into my cold bowl. I'm just going to run out of spatulas. You know, there's spatula. And I'm going to go ahead and just get every bit of cream. That's when you know it's heavy is when it sticks. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Heavy cream. All right. We're going to start whipping it, and that's when we go ahead and go ahead and add. Actually, you can add the vanilla right now, too, to be honest. Um, I go about a teaspoon of vanilla. If you don't want it um, to be super, super vanilla-y, you can go ahead and err on less, or you can go ahead and err on more if you want it to taste a little bit more vanilla than that. But about a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm gonna do half. Oh, that's wise. You can, up to you. Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna have at the ready my powdered sugar. We're gonna start with two tablespoons, but again, don't put it in yet. We're gonna go ahead and start this mix, and then we're gonna go ahead and add it in as it goes. So I'm gonna put my um, mixer, start with it on low, because if you start it high, the whole thing's gonna splatter at you. So go low, start with low, <laughs> start low. So, and then start increasing the speed. Once it starts foaming up, uh, you can add the powdered sugar. So I'm going to add a, a tablespoon of powdered sugar right now. Once it starts foaming, okay, add your powdered sugar. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add the powdered sugar. So tablespoon, you can start with a tablespoon. I'm going to go with two. If I can get this together. Two. Two. And then I'm going to go ahead and again start low. One cup of, one cup of this. And I realized because um, one cup of the cream, right? is on, I'm going to have to yell. But you're waiting for it to go into soft peaks. So 
once you start seeing the soft peaks, stop, look at it, don't keep mixing it, okay? So I wanted to tell you that now as I mix it because I'm about to you have to yell while we mix it, so. <laughs> just to show you what this is looking like so there's gonna be a moment where it gets starts to get really really thick and it's gonna start coming together so you, when I say soft peaks I mean when it starts to ripple like so and it starts to get really thick see how it's still kind of slidey that means it's still a little bit loose um, but you want to go ahead and we don't want to get past um, when it gets really ripply because you're gonna break so, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this So, excuse the pause, Miss. For mine is now ripply, and see how, like, when I move the bowl around, it doesn't slide. That's good, soft peak. You can see that this isn't loose, right? Like, it doesn't. Sl it takes a while to slide down, um, and it's ribboning at the side. That's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and give my cream a little look. I'm gonna lift up. That's pretty good. See how it's like soft and pillowy. That's what we're looking for. And if you go a little bit past that, it's gonna start breaking and we don't want that. We want it to be super pillowy. So I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna give it a little taste. And this is the part where like in between you could have tasted it. I'm using my finger. How much do you use of whipping cream? One cup? A uh, one cup, yep. Okay. I use about one cup and I put two tablespoons of powdered sugar and I find that it's sweet enough. I don't think it needs to be any sweeter than that, but you can add more if you want. And like I said, my cream, I think it's sorted. I might give it a little bit of a whirl, maybe one or two. Okay, now I'm stopping. Um, and the reason why I am is, like I said, when it starts to ripple really hard like that, that means you've like entered, like you're about to break your cream. So I think it's good to go. It should be pretty soft. So it should be pretty soft and it should be pretty stiff. I think mine is a little bit. It should be a little bit loose. Let me see what it's. That's pretty good. Let me see the top of the bowl, Carla. Yeah. That looks like it's pretty good. Um, it should. When you lift it, it definitely should stick together. It should hold. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought I wasn't showing you. <laughs> 
Yeah, it'll take a while to drop, right? It'll take a while to drop. So mine is holding pretty well. If you think you need a little bit more time, whip it for like another, you know, five to 10 seconds. Um, high speed or low speed? Yeah, uh, high speed. You want it to be high. That's I think probably, I'm gonna, I think that's probably why I took over. I'm going to stop because mine, I feel like it's pillowy and it's not dropping. And then what you're going to do is, I know it's sad, we're going to cover up the powder, the, the whipped cream, and we're going to put it in the fridge to chill uh, because we're not putting it on top of the pie until the pie has chilled in the fridge for a while. So guys, uh, again, just a heads up, after the pie comes out, do not, do not, do not put your heavy cream on top of the pie. It'll just melt, which in some cases could be delicious. In this case, not what we're achieving. So. Take your whipped cream. That looks pretty good, Carla. Yeah, it looks yeah, pretty good. It looks a little like um, grainy. Like I don't know how to like. I think I might have overdone it, maybe. Oh, do you think you might have? If it starts looking a little bit grainy like that, it might be starting to get like butter. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Do not whip anymore. Do not whip anymore. No, no. I'm going to put it in the fridge. Yeah, put it in the fridge. I might have done it. Overdone it. It's okay. That's okay. And you know what? Let's say you're whipping it, and let's say you went past the stage that Carla is at, and you see the breaking of the uh, cream, and you start seeing water appear. What you're doing is, if you keep mixing that, just so you know, don't throw out your cream. Just keep mixing it, and you're going to create butter. And the oh. butter is going to be delicious. So if you ever break your cream, and you're like, oh, no, I ruined my whipped cream, just keep mixing it, because you'll see the water separation from the, um, the milk, and the fat will actually form solid chunk, and you've just created butter. And that butter is perfectly good. And you can, it'll be sweet butter, but it'll be delicious butter. And you can put it away. So yeah, so don't throw away your cream if it's right. And another trick that you can think of too is if you think your your cream has gone bad, like you sniff it, you feel like, I think this has gone bad. You can do the same trick where you whip up your cream, you let it separate, and then you take the solid part, you rinse it in cold water, and then when you take it out, your spoiled cream has now become butter that is perfectly good to use. So if you ever come across cream that you're like, it's totally not good anymore, I can't use it. You can't use super, super spoiled cream, but you can use pretty spoiled cream to go ahead and make butter. So just so you know. Um, Carla and I are waiting for our Atlantic Beach Pie, AKA our Lemon Lime Custard Extraordinaire Pie. <laughs> We're waiting to come out. Um, but while that's all done, so you've got all your components together, right? We've got our uh, lemon, kind of Atlantic Beach pie in the uh, oven. We whipped our cream, we put it back in the fridge. Please put it back in the fridge. And then when your pie comes out, what we're looking for is it's going to be um, golden at the top and it should jiggle just a little, right? We're looking for a jiggle. And then we're gonna go ahead and let that come to room temp here uh, at home, like take it out of the oven. And then once it's room temp, you have to put it in the fridge and you have to let it chill for at least three hours. I know. Three hours. Yeah, about, right? I don't want to eat it now. <laughs> if you cut into it when it's warm, it might be a little bit runny because it has to have time to set. So you need the custard yeah. to set. Um, and then what happens is after you take it out of the fridge, we're going to take the whipped cream and you're just going to spread the whipped cream over the top. And you can be as creative as you want to be, right? You can either spread it or you can like dollop it. You can do whatever you want, but you're putting the, the whipped cream all over the top of that before you cut it and you hopefully can eat it because at that point it should be delicious. So oh, we shall see. Um, mine says my timer is about to go off. Yeah, at least 49. Yeah, so this this is going to be good. I mean, Carla and I have never made this before, so we're going to find out. I think I'm going to try and do the whipping cream again. Maybe, you know. <laughs> You know, well, if you feel weird about it, if you still have leftover cream, because we have so much time between now and like the pie, like I said, um, I just go ahead and re whip cream and then take the one that you whipped already and make butter. Okay. Yeah. I, can do that. I, I don't want to do it now, though. 
Yeah, don't do it now. Because, you know what, I bet you, your whipped cream is perfectly okay. I bet you it is. Fine, to pour it on the pie after, yeah. <laughs> like, you can taste it and go, hmm, I think it needs better cream. And then just whip up some more cream. Um, my timer went off. How about yours? About? Uh, my timer went off. All right, I'm going to stare. I'm going to, like I said, we're like looking for it to be a little bit wobbly. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it. Mine is still cooking. I think it needs another two or three minutes. I think mine is okay. Here, I'm going to show you. Look at this yumminess. Oh my gosh, Carla, it looks so good. I think it's fine. It's, it's a little jiggly, but what do you think? Should I put it in the oven again? It looks pretty. So it's wobbly, but is it jiggly in the center? It feels pretty solid around the sides. Yeah, it feels pretty solid around the sides. Yeah, I mean, you if you could put it in if you want, but I feel like that's pretty good already. I think it's pretty good. So yeah, I'm gonna go I ahead and turn off my oven so, so it's not hot in my house. I know it's it's so hot. So <laughs> Carla did the right thing. She went up the sides of the pan, unlike Julianne, who kind of you did first. you did too, but you for, you added so much butter. Remember? I did, and you know what? What I forgot is I forgot that it shrinks when it bakes, and so I went up and up the sides. I'm like, that's gonna be okay. And then when I pulled it out, I was like, why did it look so smaller? <laughs> That's okay. It's still going to taste good. Atlantic Beach lemon uh, tart? No, lemon. Atlantic Beach pie. Yeah. And the reason why, so at this point, so Carla's taken hers out. You can take like a flaky sea salt if you want and sprinkle it around the sides if you've got it. Um, uh, or you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> or you can wait until you put the whipped cream on top and then sprinkle the whipped cream with a little bit of salt to give it a little bit more of a salt. Taste. Well, I don't have flaky salt. So uh, want... Well, then don't worry about it. The saltines are perfectly salty, so and we put a little bit of salt in the custard, so it should be fine. Um, I am waiting another minute or two to go ahead and find out uh, whether or not my um, my custard was jiggly. It, it was a little bit set, but I felt like it needed a little bit more time. So at that point, Carla, we are all like on a record. I think we're about to be done. If hopefully yeah. if mine comes out like less than an hour, you and I, we're killing it. <laughs> we're running late too. We're I know we're both time. running late. <laughs> Carla, they're like, wait, I'm not ready. <laughs> Guys, this is such a, it was actually pretty, I don't want to say, like I felt like it was pretty simple to pull together. It wasn't very uh, labor intensive. It, you took things that were out of your um, pantry. I think the only thing that took a long time is zesting and juicing your lemons. I mean, to be honest, yeah. that's probably the longest time that took and didn't really take that long. And with the saltine crackers and crushing them, you literally could just leave them in the bag and just crush them, you know? Didn't have no, to. No, I took the saltine crackers out of the bag. I actually put it in the blender because I don't, I didn't have a rolling pin or uh, a bag to put them in, but they were actually really crumbly. Oh, nice, okay. But I and, I and then I just did like a quick blend in the blender. And oh, that that's smart too. Yeah, like you can just go ahead and do that. And then what, like use whatever tools you've got. And again, if you have to do that by hand, you can also do that by hand if you just wanted to crush it by hand because it didn't have to be so fine. My timer went off again. I'm going to stare. I'm going to cross my fingers. <laughs> oh, I think that's good, but all that extra butter, Carla, uh, <laughs> is bubbling on the side. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Here, oh, we'll... oh, I want to see. Oh yeah, but it, oh, it's still it's still to the rim. I think the it's still gonna be it's like yeah, it's like there's the crust is like to the rim, and I did use a pie pan that's a little bit bigger, which I should have thought about. Mine's a nine point five. But I can see uh, the, what it is, then. the butter. Yeah, the butter that I, the extra butter that I put in has like, is like bubbling at the tops. So you can see it here. Mm. But, but this is basically done. Like now all you have to do is just wait for it to cool down to room temp. Once it gets to room temp, go ahead and um, put it in the fridge and then let it chill for about, you know, three hours or so. Um, you, you can check out about two to, to get when it's cool. And then just go ahead and spread the whipped cream on top and you've got Atlantic Beach Pie. 
we're done. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> cool. Thank you, Carla, for coming Bye. and baking with me. Bye. Thank you. you. And thank you, Mary, for watching Umbrella Academy while she was double checking the comments. Oh, thank you. So uh, for that. And then everyone, I hope um, if you bake this or if you make it and make it later, uh, or if you've been baking with us, please tag Carla and I so we can see how your endeavors went and let us know. And we will see you again next Saturday. Stay safe, everyone. Bye. Bye.